We live at a time when compassion and care for others is scarce. Well, at least if you believe what we're told on the news. And while the world can be a dark place, there are still beacons of light all around us. This past few years has certainly been a disaster for so many people. We sometimes can't believe the news we hear, that there are still more terrible things coming our way and we have to brace ourselves. How are we supposed to live in a world of such heartache and such terrible news on the headlines every day? How are we even supposed to muster a smile? This is the story of one person who manages to muster a smile no matter what. It is the story of one person who somehow, against the odds, goes out of his way to make other people smile as well. Perhaps you have heard of such people before. These people aren't necessarily someone who seem to have a perfect life or have had life handed to them on a silver platter. These people aren't necessarily the richest or the ones who have the best jobs or the most perfect families or houses. It doesn't seem to matter to people who live to lift others up. If they could have an average job, an average life, a great job or a great life, or a below average job and a below average life, all that matters to them is that they seem to be put on this very earth to make people smile. One of these people is a hospital worker named Lyndon Beckford. He has a heart of gold and the voice of an angel. Lyndon Beckford has been working as a hospital transporter at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston for more than 30 years. For more than 30 years, Lyndon has been lifting the spirits of his patients at the hospital in Boston. His job consists mostly of transporting people from their rooms to the operating room and back. These people are the heart and soul of the hospital. They have very labor-intensive jobs and often they are transporting patients on what may feel like the most frightening day of their life. Maybe they have come down to the hospital to have a planned surgery and are now being rolled towards the operating room. Or maybe they have come into the emergency room and are being taken for tests. Either way, when you are in one of those beds being transported, life is probably not going well for you. So having a transport worker who can be very friendly is perhaps one of the best gifts you can receive. Often, transport workers might exchange a few words with you on the journey to the operating room, but they won't hold a full conversation. They, as mentioned, have very tiring labor-intensive jobs and they also aren't medical professionals. They cannot answer any last-minute medical questions you have or do much to make you more comfortable. They cannot get you more medication or ease your mind by telling you the statistics of a particular surgery for a test. However, that does not mean that they cannot go above and beyond and ease your mind and soul in a completely different way. Because the journey to the operating room can be one of the most daunting trips that a person can make, Lyndon's role is important and he's handled it gracefully for decades. When Lyndon first started working at the hospital, it took him a little while to learn the ins and outs of the maze of hallways. He had to learn how to get a patient from point A to point B, and either of those points could be anywhere in the hospital. His journey with them could be long or short, and he knew he had to be efficient because if he wasn't, there would be many more patients waiting for him and the hospital's schedule would be thrown off. In a lot of ways, people like Lyndon are what keep the hospital running smoothly. Once Lyndon learned the ins and outs of the hallways, he had to learn to decipher things like short forms for different rooms, and that X-ray was actually in radiology, and that the rooms for CT and MRI scans could be on completely different sides of the hospital. In addition, he had to learn how to operate medical equipment so that the patients had a smooth and pain-free ride. Lyndon could be called to transport a patient in a wheelchair or a bed, and both of those items could have a multitude of other medical devices attached to them. Perhaps there were multiple IV bags or monitors or devices to assist with breathing or other bodily functions. In addition, patients who were going for day surgeries were often wheeled around with all their things to keep them from being lost. He had to learn to move everything as smoothly as possible and stay on schedule. Given that long list of things that Lyndon has to be an expert on, it seems like a very difficult job and not one that would always bring a smile to someone's face. Lyndon, however, always acted differently. Lyndon always wears a big smile. He knows how frightened and anxious patients can be as he wheels them to the operating room. And that's why he always greets them with the words, My name is Lyndon and I will be your driver. In addition to the amazing warmth and love that he shows everyone, Lyndon sings for them too. In a video which has been shared by half a million people, a reporter follows him around the hospital 
and it really hit us right in the heart, seeing patients smile as Lyndon walks with them. As he transports sick patients, many racked with anxieties or dealing with a lot of discomfort, he has a special way of putting them at ease. He sings. It isn't just little tunes that Lyndon sings either. Lyndon often sings full Broadway choruses. He takes requests and is much better than any radio or iPod that a patient could bring along. As he takes them down to what could be the worst day of their lives, he smiles and soothes their souls with familiar songs that makes them forget their troubles for a moment. When asked why he would do this, when he already has to spend so much energy on his job, Lyndon replied, Working on the front line is a different mindset because you have to learn to give up yourself first, forgetting about yourself for a while so you can help other people. Before he ends up singing, Beckford and Patience spend a lot of time talking together. He simply cannot break into chorus and hope that the patient likes the song that he is singing. He knows that people are equally comforted and bothered by different things, and he would never want to add to their fears or anxieties. To start singing, he needs to know a bit about them. He doesn't ask them about their medical conditions or what surgery they're having, or what test they're going to. Instead, Lyndon takes a completely different approach. He speaks to them as if they are simply people he has met, not patients in a hospital. He explains their interactions like this. In patient transport, a lot of time we're just talking, have a conversation about any little thing, gardening, pets, sports, anything in the news, or, you know, families. In between then, if something comes to me, I'll just start singing out. I'm singing anything that comes to mind, reggae, gospel, country, love songs, whatever comes to mind at the moment, I'll sing. People tell me how good it is and how good it makes them feel, so I continue doing it. He says that whatever usually comes to mind is inspired by his conversations with the patients. For example, if someone mentions a religious background, then he would sing a gospel song for them. If they mentioned living on a ranch in the south, he knows that they will enjoy a good old country tune. Lyndon seems to know the words to an endless amount of songs. He has a very good memory, and if he knows a patient is going to be there for quite a while and needs him, he will make a point to learn one of their favorite songs if he doesn't already know it, in order to make their stay a little bit easier. In the midst of a pandemic, Beckford said there isn't much that has changed about the way he helps care for his patients. With COVID-19, it doesn't make much difference to us. We're doing safe practices, you know. Double up your gloves and your precaution gowns and your mask. I'm not too concerned about it. I'm more worried about people who are going through physical illness, you know. Some may say that this attitude is careless, but there are others who say that this attitude is brave. Lyndon is a frontline worker risking his life in the pandemic, and he wants his patients to be first, no matter the danger to himself. He has decided that he is going to work as long as the pandemic is on, and will think about things like retirement after. He wants patients to know that in a time when they cannot have visitors and no one can even wave at them from the doorway, there is someone inside the hospital who can help them find something to recognize in the sterile chaos. Fundamentally, he said that his job, and others like it, takes a certain mindset. Working on the front line is a different mindset because you have to learn to give up yourself first, forgetting about yourself for a while so you can help other people. His medical colleagues also enjoy Lyndon's songs, saying they bring a smile to their faces and that they think his sunny attitude and beautiful voice lift up their mental health. We all know that a slumping of mental health, especially in such an important workplace, can be very dangerous indeed. Lyndon, despite all the pressure and the danger, has continued to show up every day with an amazingly sunny attitude and his repertoire of songs to rival any music buff. The harder the situation gets, the more it seems like Lyndon is able to shine through. People like Lyndon are just as essential in a hospital as any doctor or nurse. People like Lyndon make the world a better place. We hope this story inspires us to treat each other with warmth and respect. It costs virtually nothing, and if you have a voice, you can sing, and your song can actually be like a bomb for the soul. Please share Lyndon's story and let everyone know that the world is actually a much warmer place than we might think.